everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka MBT, and I'm gonna make these videos until you stop watching them. Today we are doing another reading Twitter instead of thinking of my own content thread, TM. In the past we've looked at some cards that were unsung heroes, some standouts that looked terrible at first glance but had their niche applications. We've looked at some cards that looked powerful on first glance but in actuality were PP bad. Today we're going to be looking at some cards that are absolutely bonkers strong but have a ridiculous stipulation that prevents them from being good at all. Sometimes that stipulation is a lock into a specific archetype full of poo-poo cards. Sometimes that stipulation is something like you can't special summon for the rest of the turn. But in general, these are a significant amount of cards that would be really, really, really playable, but they've got to catch. But first, this video is brought to you by today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. I've spent the last couple of weeks with a master dual-sized hole in my heart. While NR Fest is fun, I can't bring myself to sit through a ladder full of banquet burn. So while I wait for these Dazeef viewers to blow over, I've been playing some Raid Shadow Legends. This amazing RPG available on both phone and PC has over 600 unique champions to collect and customize, about the same as the current player base of Duel Links. If you're just looking for the link, don't worry, it's in the description. Today I'd like to highlight my favorite bit of content, the Doom Tower. This tower is basically like a giant prison where you fight your way to the top. It's kind of like Dueling Book Ladder, but with way less slurs. To climb to the top, you're going to need an army of champions, and because the bosses are really tough, you're going to need some serious specialists if you're going to beat them. You're generally going to want ways to remove debuffs, you'll also want some pretty high resistances, a couple of bosses need specific mechanics to beat them, like the Scarab King, he takes barely any damage unless he reduces max HP. It's kind of like a puzzle. Not that kind of puzzle. Anyway, when I'm not scaling the Doom Tower, I like to tinker in Arena. I've become a regular Arena Andy using my powerful skills and my textbook literacy to climb up the Arena Ladder. There's seriously never been a better time to get started with Raid, and if you use my link or scan the QR code right here, new players will get a free starter pack worth almost $30 to kickstart your game. We're talking about a free champion Tayrell, 200,000 silver, an experience boost, an energy refill, and an ancient shard so you can summon an awesome champion as soon as you get in game. You'll find your rewards here in your inbox for the next 30 days only. You can find me in the game under the name MBTYGO, and I hope to see you in game. So the first one I post is W Nebula Meteorite, and this is kind of the poster child for this type of card. This changes all face down monsters on the field to face up defense position in an archetype full of flip monsters. Then during the end phase of this turn changes all face up light reptile monsters you control to defense position, draws a card for each, and specials a level seven or higher light reptile from your deck. In Worms, this is usually a plus Seven. It's ridiculous, but you have to play it in an archetype that has one other playable card. For that reason, it is terrible. Flower Gathering gets you four monsters from deck. Forget the Xeno Lock in any other deck, this would be busted if only the rest of the deck wasn't so top deck focused. So, um, Flower Cardian, if you're unfamiliar, is a series of monsters designed to make you play a game that isn't Yu-Gi-Oh in Yu-Gi-Oh. Imagine if in uh, Magic the Gathering archetype, for example, you had to play chess out of nowhere. Uh, these cards modeled off of Hanafuda have these unbelievable spell cards that are like, just summon five guys from deck. Who cares? Draw 16 cards. It doesn't matter, but they all have a specific line of text on them. You cannot normal or special summon other monsters during the turn you activate this card except Flower Guardians. So in reality, they're awful. W Many of you did not understand this assignment. Actual fucking custom card. So Conductor of Neftis is a ritual monster in an archetype in which you want to destroy cards in your hand, namely Sacred Phoenix of Neftis. Look at this. You can ritual summon this card with Rebirth of Neftis. If it's ritual summoned, special a Neftis ritual monster from your hand <coughs> or deck, except Conductor of Neftis. This is treated as a ritual summon. Just ignore rituals entirely. You know, we, we got to make this playable some way. If this card is tributed or destroyed by a Neftis card effect, during the next standby phase, destroy up to three Neftis cards, one each from your hand, deck, and field. And despite that, the deck is really bad. Just awful. Ah, uh, glad King Scarlet came by. Appliancer Electro Lyrical World is a fantastic example of this. Listen to this card. When this card is activated, add an Appliancer from your deck to your hand except the field spell. First off, holy hell. Not only any of the monsters, any of the spell traps. Once per turn, if you link summon an Appliancer, add an Appliancer from your graveyard to your hand. All the Appliancers summon themselves from the hand. And then once per turn when an opponent's monster, or when any monster declares an attack rather, you can move an appliancer to another of your main monster zones. This means that they link up and get their bonus effects. Unfortunately, there is not one 
good appliance or monster. Not one. Sorry, Laundry Dragon. I've been saying for years now, if GT ever gets a counter trap, Angel could see competitive play in a deck that can make her. That's true. A generic four that can be made by rank up searches all of her archetype spell traps. Ghost Trick Angel of Mischief is an exceptionally powerful card. It's a generic four. It can be made with a generic three in Alucard or a generic two in So Cute Boss. She can search a Ghost Trick Spell Trap, which can include Shot, which can summon back the Alucard you detach, overlay for a second one, and search a second card, making UFD and getting you a single Ghost Trick Spell Trap search with the Shot added back to him. <laughs> this card's crazy. Advanced Heraldry Art. Summon two Hieraldic Beasts from your graveyard, and then Xyz. So we've got a double Monster Reborn that Xyz, not once per turn. In a deck with an Xyz monster, not once per turn. That's a double Foolish Burial if you link it off. Foolish is the Reborn for itself and a Searcher. But it's just not good enough. Perfect example, Nachuria Bamboo Shoot. There were maybe 10 consecutive formats where people tried to break this card. This card's tribute summoned by tributing a Nachuria while this card is face up on the field. Your opponent cannot activate spell or trap cards. It's Io, it's Royal Decree, all in a monster that resists every normal summon. Almost impossible to out this lock, and also almost impossible to set up, because how the hell are you getting a Nachuria onto your side of the field to tribute? This is why a lot of people were excited about Pineapple. Ooh, an Achuria that comes back. That means we contributed for Bamboo Shoot in practice. Ass. Merlin's funny. Uh, you contribute this card to Special and Noble Knight from your deck. You can't Special Summon monsters the turn you activate this effect, except Noble Knight monsters. Quick effect, you can banish this card from the graveyard, Synchro Noble Knight using monsters you control, or... Xyz summon a Noble Knight using monsters you control. Each one of those effects is a once per turn. Uh, Merlin is not only a bad card for a bad archetype in Noble Knight, he's bad in Noble Knight. <laughs> it, it is a card with a ton of text and a lot of really cool effects that just doesn't do anything. Ursartic Radiation, excellent example. Do you know what this card reads? Draw seven cards. Do you know how hard you have to work to get a card that says draw seven to be bad? And not only bad, unplayably bad? Activate this card by placing seven counters on it. Whenever an Ursartic is specialed from the hand or extra deck, remove a counter, draw a card. Then once per turn during the end phase, target an Ursartic in your graveyard and shuffle it into the deck. It recycles too. Doll Happiness? I'm reading this card now for the first time. This card is activated at Grandpa de Meadow or Box of Friends from your deck to your hand. While you control Princess Cologne, your opponent's monsters cannot target monsters with zero attack or defense for attacks. Once per turn, destroy a monster in your hand or field. And if you do send it, what the f flippin' heck? This card lets you add Box of Friends, pop Box of Friends, bin a doll monster. <laughs> Imagine if the attack position effects of these weren't locked to Morphtronics. Yeah, so Morphtronics cell phone is an ad emancipator. While in attack position, roll a six-sided die and reveal cards from the top of your deck equal to the roll, special summoning a level four or lower Morphtronic from among them. Ignoring the summoning conditions, shuffle the rest back into the deck. Morphtronic smartphone, exact same shit. Except it adds it to your hand. BEF Zalos is a pretty good one. Uh, when this card is activated, you can add a boss rush from your deck to your hand. BES monsters control you control get 500 attack and defense. Your opponent cannot target them with card effects, and they can't be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. Once per turn, special a BES from your hand. If a BES is normally special, put a counter on it. This card's crazy. Um, it improves all of your BESs. It lets you add them to your hand, play with boss rush on the field at any time. But they have never, ever printed a good BES. So... The card is terrible. Bef Zalos, more like Jeff Zabos. Don't put that in the video. I remember seeing this and it's seeming crazy, but a free solemn for a bad archetype is kind of standard now. Uh, do a barrel roll. You know, it's it's fine. Thor, Lord of the Acer. One Nordic Beast and two non-tuner monsters. Once per turn, negate the effects of all face-up monsters your opponent currently controls until the end of this turn. And then once per turn during the end phase, if this face-up card you control is destroyed by your opponent's card and sent to the graveyard, you can banish a Nordic Beast tuner from your graveyard to special summon this card. If summoned this way, inflict 800 to your opponent. This one was almost playable. I mean, there are even some Nordic Beast tuners that are maybe good enough, but that two non-tuner monsters is just too many. Add to that the fact that its negation is not a quick effect, and he's actually a lot less strong than he looks. But like many cards with beefy, beefy bodies, he has an extremely pinchable waist. All right, let me just read you what this card does. So uh, the problem with Blackwing is that uh, Black Whirlwind only triggers on normal summon, so you can't use it to add a shitload of cards to your hand. Unless... If you control no monsters and have this card in your hand, banish another Blackwing from your hand, put a Black Whirlwind from your deck, into your spell and trap zone, 
then either send this card to the graveyard or normal summon it without tributing. You can't special summon monsters from the extra deck for the rest of the turn except dark monsters, and none of those are ever good. You can use this effect of Black Moon, Sea Moon, the Poison Wind once per turn during the end phase. Send a Black Whirlwind placed by the effect to the graveyard, and if you do, take a thousand damage. This one's great because if you start with Black Whirlwind and then trigger it, you get two triggers. Uh, it is literally a one card full Raid Raptor combo, and it's awful. Imagine having a card that's incredibly easy to make and reads summon three monsters, including one monster from deck, and ends on the most penis end board ever. Yeah, TGs have a lot of really easy ways to make this guy too, and it's just not enough. No, come on. Don't Don't come for my boy. Yeah, Drelth is um Drelth is a pretty good example of this. Uh, this is a Tindangle monster that says flip at a flip monster from your deck to your hand or bin it. And you can summon it in face down defense position by pitching a card from your hand. Uh, you also get to bin a Tindangle on the way there including Tindangle Intruder, which if it's sent for the effect of this, will summon itself. And please do not Google if that is true or not. Toons aren't as bad as Worms, but I think this fits. Oh, I would argue they're much, much worse. Comic Hand. If you control Toon World, fucking snatch steal an opponent's monster. Just take it. It's a Toon now. It's yours. Nah, baby, you're so playable. You enable incredible combos and protect against destruction and everything. It's not you, it's the archetype, baby. For what it's worth, uh, Sunvine Sewing, uh, one of the many enablers in uh, Sun Avalon, is a very good card in a deck that is pretty competent. You know, it's good at spamming, it's uh, powerful, but two things are preventing this deck from being tiered. The first is that it's very hard. Uh, it's really difficult to actually play because the lines diverge like nobody's business and they are not linear. And second, there's just no end boss. There's just not a single end boss in plant locked monsters. Um, people are saying Therion is maybe going to bring them to the forefront. I hope so because this deck deserves its day in the sun. The sun Avalon, that is. Thank you. To really show off how bad the Crystal Beast monsters are, the archetype has four cards that fall under the category you're describing and are unplayable for a decade. Add a Crystal Beast monster from your deck to your hand, then put a Crystal Beast monster with a different name from your deck face up in your spell and trap card zone. This card, of course, is very powerful, allows you to place a Crystal Beast uh, monster from your hand deck or graveyard in your spell trap zone as a continuous spell. Rainbow Ruins is a field spell that is a negate for a spell trap, draws you two cards a turn. And Rainbow Bridge literally just says add anything to your hand. Fuck it! Any card whatsoever. Deck's still terrible. The Yu-Gi-Oh equivalent of crack cocaine stuck at a deck with zero good ways to extend plays. You remember when, like, <laughs> this was a fusion monster you had to work for? Each turn, one level 5 or higher Gemini my monster you normal summon can be summoned without tributing. Love that, first of all, that they just, they're like, fuck it, summon anything. During your main phase, you can normal summon a Gemini monster in addition to your normal summoner set. Awesome. Once per turn, target a card your opponent controls. Banish a Gemini monster you control. That is treated as an effect monster until your opponent's end phase, and if you do, destroy the card. So, you know, it just lets you for free normal a really powerful Gemini monster, immediately normal it again to get its effect, fire the effect, and then use it as a removal spell. And there is not a single playable Gemini monster. I will say, this typing of monster is ripe for the breaking. The first time we see a playable Gemini archetype, it will be busted out the ass. Fortune Lady actually is um is perfect for this. Do you know how many Fortune Lady cards qualify for this? Fortune Lady Water says if you special summon this card, just fucking draw two. No once per turn. There are cards that summon Fortune Ladies. There's a Fortune Lady spell that says return a Fortune Lady from your banished zone back into the graveyard. Draw two. Future Visions is everything you could ever ask for on a Fortune Lady card. And they have an Omni that is maybe the greatest Omni ever made but they're bad. Ah, glad Chaotic Meatball brought this up. War Rock Mountain, when it was first revealed, did get people on the hype train because it does have a lot of text on it. When it's activated, add a War Rock monster from your deck to your hand. At the start of the battle phase, if you control no monsters or all monsters you control are warriors, special a War Rock. If you, a warrior monster would be destroyed by battle, send this card to the graveyard instead. It does everything this archetype wants, but the archetype is penis. Tori Fune is the stupidest fucking piece of legacy support I've ever seen. L listen to this. Tribute this card, summon two Bujins from the deck in defense position, 
When you Xyz summon a Bujin Xyz while this card is in your graveyard, you know, like immediately afterwards, equip this card to it, and any monster destroyed by battle with that equipped card is banished. So, you know, it's Rescue Rabbit plus Zodiac Whiptail. But nope, it's ass. What the fuck? I've never read this card. Activate one of these effects. Place a Sulfur Cord Pendulum Monster from your deck into your Pendulum Zone. Add a Sulfur Cord Pendulum Monster from your hand to your extra deck face up. Then fucking set scales or add two cards, an odd and an even pendulum scale from your pendulum zones to the extra deck face up. And if you do, draw two. What the fuck? I'm playing this deck. Glad Tatsum brought this up. Tachyon Transmigration. If you control a Galaxy Eyes monster, negate the activations of your opponent's spell trap cards and monster effects activated before this card in the chain that's not an activation that's every single card they've activated prior you know that big flunder chain none of that shit is resolving and if you do shuffle the negated cards on the field back into the deck if you control a galaxy eyes tachyon dragon put that shit into play from your hand are you ready not only is this card wrong. terrible it's terrible in its associated deck. Even Galaxy Eyes players don't play this card. You are going to see a lot of this card.